But also, he's a professor who has suffered because of vax mandates. You're going to want to stay tuned for this episode. This is the John Henry Weston Show. What is it that you foresee and what gives you the sort of hint that this might be coming in a big way? When you see the, the new age teachings that surround these alien phenomena and the UFO phenomena, and when you look, when you research what people have actually experienced with these alleged UFO encounters and alien encounters, it's all demonic. And I have yet to find a single example of a supposed UFO encounter, alien encounter that isn't either clearly a hoax or a hallucination or, a, you know, explainable by natural phenomena. Or if it's not, it's in some way diabolical. We read time and time again of these supposed aliens fleeing at the name of Jesus and things like that. The exact same reactions we would expect from a demonic encounter. One of the things that's truly remarkable is that you'd expect the world, especially the Antichrist world, those powers that seek to destroy truth, the ultimate truth, would want to foist some kind of deception like this. But coming or aided and abetted in it by the Vatican, that's truly disturbing. But we've already seen that same scenario go on. The shutting down of the churches it was heralded by the Vatican. It, was it really is disturbing. And it's a sign of the times, the great apostasy that we're in. We can't even trust the men in, in pink hats or red hats in the Vatican or other hats. Maybe we'll get to that later. But um, to, to keep us in the faith, firm in the faith and more faith and morals. Instead, we have to stick with what the seers are saying, the true magisterium. You open up the, the actual magisterial text that are just as valid today as they were 50 years ago or 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago. Everything that the, the true magisterium has given us is set in stone. And we need to understand that as Catholics, this doesn't change until the end of time. It will never change. So when you see these men in the Vatican trying to abuse their authority to present a new gospel to you, it doesn't matter that, they're, that their residential address happens to be a certain city-state within the boundaries of Rome. You need to reject that. You need to stick with what the magisterium says. And thanks be to God, it, it really is clear. And yes, we live in times of great confusion, And but if you want to know the truth, it's not that difficult to discover. You open up the magisterium and you'll find it in there. So with the vax mandates, and that, that's yet another thing, we've got the Vatican really cooperating with what I would say is the laying down of the infrastructure of the Antichrist. And I'm not saying the vaccine is literally the mark of the beast or anything like that, but it seems to be a preparation for those times where I think that we've been in boot camp for the last couple of years, the faithful. I think that what's been going on has been a training for us for what is coming next. And if you've been giving in to that, to these mandates and these diabolical directives, you better be really careful because tomorrow you might just succumb to something even graver, even more diabolical, maybe the mark of the beast itself. So with the vaccine, uh, you know, that's like so many people out there today. I, I, it was mandated for me, for, for me to continue my studies. I've been working on my PhD in philosophy for four years now at the State University of New York in Albany, and they uh, mandated it for all students. And I've been able, I was able to avert that for a while by studying online, but now there's no more online courses available. So it's just the vaccine or yeah. I'm kicked out. So obviously I refuse to get the vaccine. I will not. I submitted my application for religious exemption. It was denied outright, no opportunity for appeal. And they, you know, they said, this decision is final. You have the option of either going fully online. There were no there are no online courses op offered for my PhD or of withdrawing from the university, basically, or getting the vaccine, which I had already explained was not an option for me. So this is just another way of saying that they kicked me out. After four years of work, my PhD, they kicked me out. But I say God's will be done. That's the, it wasn't God's will for me to continue there at this point. And I would encourage everyone to react accordingly when their conscience tells them one thing. And when all the external pressures tell you something else, Always, always, always side with your conscience, no matter what the cost. In that sense, it is a perfect preparation for the Mark of the Beast. Just like you said, it's a boot camp. The preparation factor is so clear. 
we were barred from stores uh, without uh, masking. And then came the vax mandates. You were going to be fired from your job. Your children are going to be withheld from school. You're withheld from travel. If you do manage to travel, you, unlike those who are vaxxed, have to quarantine for 14 days. It's, it's jail sentences. It's unreal what's happened. And so your analogy of a boot camp or a perfect prep for the coming of the mark of the beast, it's uncanny. And that's, what, that's clearly what's happening. And God's permissive will, of course, is operative here in giving us this training for what's coming next. But on the devil's side of things, you see him preparing. You know, the devil's not, he's not omnipotent. He has to lay foundations and prepare and get ready. And I never would have imagined, and I've been keeping an eye on prophecy for a very long time now, but even I, I wouldn't have imagined how quickly they could have laid down this infrastructure for the Antichrist as COVID enabled. With the, the Combine the vax mandates with the health passports and the upcoming central bank digital currencies, you have everything right there that they, they only need to tweak that slightly to make it become, along with maybe a chip in the right hand or forehead, the literal mark of the beast itself. And if we look at the signs of the times, I don't know dates and I don't, and I'm not a prophet, so I don't know the future, but it seems to me just looking at the signs of the times by the led faith, as we're called to as faithful Christians, it seems that it's right around the corner. And I repeat this line all the time to set your face like Flint, to not violate a single precept of faith or morals, because we tend to forget today. We, we tend to ignore today that both are dogmatic. Both are absolutely infallible the teachings of the magisterium on faith and morals. We can never reject a single tenet of either, even if it costs us our, our lives. And it's more than worth it. If you have to sacrifice your very life to avoid making some sort of a, giving some sort of a proverbial pinch of incense before the, the pagan idols, the, the emperors we know from the early Roman times, that's, that's, that's immediate entry into heaven. If you get to die as a martyr, that, that's the, one of the greatest gifts you could, you could possibly have. So be excited for that possibility. But don't even dialogue. And that's, you know, the, coming back to the alien issue, that's why if we even start dialoguing with what we should know from the onset is not an option, is ruled out. Yes, that's where it's easiest to resist temptation is when you're farthest away from it. Because it's like two magnets. The closer you get to temptation, the stronger the pull and the harder it is to resist. So if you just reject dialogue with evil from the very onset, everything is going to go much better for you. But if you start to second guessing yourself, second guessing your conscience and thinking, oh, well, maybe it's, maybe it's fine. I'm being pressured. I, you know, it, it, my personal life will get difficult if I, if I stick with my conscience on this. That's when you really are getting into unbelievably dangerous territory with your very salvation itself. Now, I think that's why the, the message on aliens, UFOs and, and the like needs to hit home with folks because before they come to you with this kind of a deception, you know that this is not a possibility of being real. Sure, there is intelligent life out there. There are angels. There's also devils. And they are intelligent life force, but they are not physical creations. It, it can get confusing, though, because they can manifest um, as physical creations as well. So there is that. And that's what I think they're going to be doing increasingly in the coming days is, is there's technological aspects of this as well, because I'm sure the elite will want to leverage this for their agenda, maybe with holograms or all sorts of other things that might make it seem like there's aliens. And they've clearly been behind this, this UFO push in the last couple of years subtly. But even when the demons themselves start manifesting, there are various ways that we, the same spiritual warfare tactics we've always used as faithful, use them here. But the, the before you even use those, you must know to not dialogue. And that's why I, it's unpopular, I suppose, but that's why I insist upon this so much, where, that there are no aliens. Because if you even start that dialogue, you're starting to get sucked in. So don't dialogue with these supposed aliens when they're presented by the elite, by the mainstream media. Instead, rebuke them in the name of Jesus and see what happens. See, see, see what you experience when you when you immediately resort to prayer, there's going, even if you yourself experience something like that, they'll react like the demons would because it's exactly what they are.